All right, I figured now would be a good time to make a little update video <clears throat> on account of Christmas just ended a few days ago, and this is just kind of like a, I survived the holiday season, my first holiday season as a CCA. Um, it's been a couple months since my last video, and I've almost been on the job for six months now. Well, I guess with orientation included, it has been six months, so I figured now is just kind of a good time to make another video, uh, talk a little bit more about my experience, you know, how things have changed, uh, all that kind of stuff. Obviously, since I am making this video and wearing post office equipment, or I should say post office uniform, <clears throat> I still work for the post office. I am still a mailman. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm still a CCA. So I will start off by saying, believe it or not, I didn't think December was that bad. I think it was more so due to my unique situation that I happen to be in, which I'm going to get into in just a second. Um, big part of it, before I get into everything else, you know, I've mentioned a ton of times that I work in a uh, big time college town. Uh, so, you know, <clears throat> uh, college colleges have winter break, Christmas break, whatever you want to call it, where the students leave for three weeks, almost a month, actually, it's like three weeks exactly, or actually like, you know, a little over three weeks, but not quite a month. So anyway, you know, when I work in a city that has a university that houses, well, not houses, but has 40,000 students, and let's say 30,000 of them go home during break, you know, that right there decreases package volume exponentially. So while the all the resident and we also the city has a big residential like actual residence too so while the residential packages may have went up a lot you know all the students were gone so they didn't order anything and the ones that were still there might have still ordered but you know a good majority almost all of them leave so that takes a lot away from the ordering and the reason why I say December wasn't that bad for me personally is because I had a hold down on a route that was primarily, I'd say, 80% student housing. So, you know, just houses that, you know, four or five students rent out and live there. It was just a bunch of those houses, you know, on the route, several streets of those. So when, you know, most of them leave, I kind of had it easy. I'm not going to lie. Well, I will say <clears throat> they were there for like the whole, the Black Friday was absolutely nuts and Cyber Monday, you know, that week was crazy for everybody because the students were still there and obviously they ordered a lot on the deals and, you know, cash in on that. So there were some days on the route I had a hold down on and just to rewind a little bit, I started this hold down at the beginning of November and it just ended a few days, actually two days after Christmas is when it like officially ended. So I was on the route for almost two months. I liked the route, by the way. <clears throat> and I liked it even more when all the students left. But anyway, the week of Black Friday, you know, that kind of thing, it was just absolutely crazy for everyone. I guess our off my office set a record for the most packages that they... Well, it was not like a national record. It was like an office record for the most packages ever in one day. We set that record, I believe it was... Cyber Monday, it was Cyber Monday, it was Wednesday, that Wednesday. So Wednesday after Cyber Monday is when we set a record for the most packages our office has ever had. And on that day on my route alone, well, not my route, but my hold down route, <clears throat> I delivered 277 packages on that route. So I definitely got a taste of, you know, the holiday season, how it could have been, you know, for about a week. But then, you know, after that week, the students, you know, started slowly, gradually leaving because, you know, the, the last possible day they could have been there was a Friday and, you know, exams start Monday. So, you know, some students had all their exams Monday, they're gone, you know, all exams Tuesday, they're gone. So they slowly started leaving and the route, you know, the package, my package volume went down, 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 down to almost nothing to whereas, you know, the last two weeks on any given day, I'd have anywhere from... 20 to 40 packages which is compared to what it usually is is absolutely nothing like even you know 
early in November when, you know, there wasn't really any deals or anything going on, you know, that the route would still get, you know, close to two, you know, I regularly delivered 180 to 200 packages on that route, you know, on just a normal day. So the thing I liked most about that route is they barely got any mail, but they got a lot of packages. So, you know, on, at any given house, you know, a lot of houses just would get skipped completely or just one little letter. You know, I even did so much as casing in all the DPS just because, you know, I had time to do it and it just made it easier because the route was mostly all students and they got such little mail. It just made more sense to kind of case the DPS in. So just because of the little mail volume. So I liked the route a lot and that was a reason why I put a hold down on it. I had done the route previously, so I was familiar with it. And once I saw that it was going to be up for a hold, you know, this was like the first week of November, I jumped on it thinking ahead. I didn't know how long it was going to be up for, but I was like, well, I'm going to get on this anyway, because if it does go into December or Christmas, I know the students are going to be gone for a long period of time. So I just happened to get lucky and it worked out for me. So that was cool. That definitely made my December a lot easier than it could have been because I know some routes, you know, just looking around the office in the mornings, you know, there were some routes that, I mean, most routes had two cages full of, you know, packages that had no, like actual, you know, city residents on it who, you know, aren't college students. And some, you know, there were some days where some had two and a half and upwards of three. So my December's, you know, well, granted, you know, I did the route and had to help, you know, out afterwards, at least the route I was on from, you know, said time to said time was, you know, the eight hours or whatever. And sometimes it took me, you know, I would do it, you know, in less than eight just because, you know, all the students are gone. So it's like the route doesn't take eight hours to do when they're all gone and not ordering packages. <laughs> Excuse me. So. But yeah, I could definitely see whereas, you know, and then I wasn't the only route that had students, you know, there's a couple of routes that are almost all students. So, you know, but I was able to get a, so I know how just thinking if every route in the office was residential, like actual residents of how crazy things would have actually been, which dang, I can't even imagine how crazy that would have been. And another reason why I think December wasn't that hard for me, like personally, things were a lot harder for the office as a whole in September and October, just because we were understaffed for so long. They finally hired people in time, you know, at the end of November, early December, you know, to where, you know, they finally, so we finally had enough people where during the whole month of December, we had anywhere from three or four CCAs who just ran packages all day. So that made things a lot easier for everybody else. Whereas in September and October, there were many occasions, and I'll get into this in more detail soon, there were many occasions where we'd be down two, three, you know, two or three routes a day at times just because of call-ins, and then we had no one to cover that route. Now with the, um, you know, CCAs we hired now, if we were down a route because of a call-in in December, well, they would have just put, well, if this CCA was scheduled to run packages, they would just make them, you know, okay, you're going to be on this route today. So, you know, it was covered where that wasn't the case back in September and October. And so I'll kind of get into my next point of, you know, I like the job still, you know, I, I like the job a lot. Actually, there are just some things I don't like about it. And the biggest thing being, is if you're good at the job, you kind of get punished for it. I know that's bad to say and kind of sounds cruel, but I'm just telling it how it is. And the reason I say that is, you know, I kind of inadvertently, inadvertently played my cards too soon, so to speak. So what I mean by that is I, a couple days ago, I watched one of my old videos, like my two weeks on the job video, just to kind of you know, see how things change, what I had to say back then. And I, rem I watched, you know, I listened to myself say, you know, two weeks on the job, I went in and cased a route 
and delivered it for the first time, you know, casing delivered, you know, after being on the job for two weeks and nine and a half hours. And then the very next day, I came in, cased the route, delivered it in eight hours. And that was the second time ever doing the route two weeks into the job. So not to sound cocky or arrogant, but I got good too fast and I like didn't purposely do it. I wasn't running through routes or you know what I mean. It, everything just kind of clicked for me really fast and I was able to pick it up really fast and just get it kind of right away almost. But, you know, there's still days I struggled, you know, it's not like I was an expert, you know, immediately. I'm just saying I was able to get the gist of it pretty quickly. And the reason why that is somewhat of a bad thing is because if you're good, you get given more work. You know what I mean? So let's say I can case and finish this route in eight hours where the person next to me, you know, can't case and finish the route in under 10, you know, who's going to get all the extra work? You know, the person, you know, who gets it done in eight, that's just how it is. It's, it's common sense. It's logic. And the thing that really annoyed me a lot is back in September and October, like I said, we were always down routes because of Collins and we didn't have the extra CCAs to cover it. So I was, there were so many days several days like there was like a week straight where I double cased every single day and it just drove me crazy I I couldn't stand it I hated it I I'm pretty I'm good at casing I just I don't like casing I just would rather be out of the office out on the street you know doing my thing I'd rather case my route get out on the street deliver and then go help everybody else you know whatever instead of casing my route you know being stuck in the office and then having to case another route you know and not hitting the street till 11 30 some days 11 11 30 but not only was I like double casing on the other route I had to case since we didn't have anyone to cover the route I was oftentimes splitting the route four or five ways you know into like our pivots you know our throw-offs so not only did I have to case another route I also had to split up that route in four ways and you know divvy up all the packages into the appropriate section well you know this street center street goes with this hour who's you know Bill's getting and then you know main street is on this hour that Jill's getting so it's like you know I had to do all that crap and you know there was just like a span where I was doing that you know a lot and it was just driving me crazy like I was I was boiling, like, I wanted to quit really bad, there were days, you know, I would just go into work angry, just because I knew what was coming, I knew they were going to make me double case, because I knew, you know, how understaffed we were at the time, and I just knew there were going to be call-ins, because there just always was, so I was just, I was going into work angry, you know, I was frustrated, I I really wanted to quit, I I swear there was a time where I almost did, but the one thing that kind of kept my sanity is just I just kept thinking just just make it to regular just make it to regular and I keep telling myself this now even though things have gotten better you know because the I kind of have a unique situation where I came in at the right time so I started you know end of June was my orientation if everything you know goes not as to plan but as things are projected I'll be converted in less than a year from when I started so I should be, you know, converted regular on my own route in about four months from now, like max. And I'm just like super excited about it and pumped. And that's kind of what keeps me motivated and keeps me going is just, just make it through to regular, just make it through to regular. I can have my own route. I don't have to be on the overtime list. I can just do work assignment, do my route and go home unless they force me to work overtime, that kind of thing. So that's kind of what is keeping me grounded and sane because... You know, I started, when I first got hired, I was number eight on the list for CCA. Since then, we've had, well, without going into too much detail, one quit, one person in front of me quit, another person in front of me got fired, so that moved me up the list, you know, conversions, that kind of thing. So now, and then, you know, I think I mentioned this in an earlier video, uh, I, the very old office I, you know, came into, there's a lot of older carriers who have been there for a very long time, which is why the conversion is, you know, looking so fast for me. We have, we have a couple that are set to retire 
in a month, well, at the end of January, actually, and then another one who's set to retire in uh, mid-March. So, you know, my spot's right there within those. So, you know, that's pretty cool. So that, you know, I got lucky in the sense that conversion short. So that's, man, I credit to anyone who's a CCA for several, several years, because I don't know how you could do it. I don't think I could do this for, you know, if I knew if all well, I should say at the very least, if I knew conversion was looking like a long time for me, I would at least transfer to a different office where things probably aren't so crazy. I know that's hard to set, you know, hard to gauge or hard to know because every office varies. But, you know, I feel like mine is more difficult than most, at least based on what I've heard. We've had a few transfer CCAs who came in, you know, as some of our new CCAs, and they, you know, they, they've told me how much harder my office is that I work in than where they came from. So that's and same with like a regular transfer we had a couple months ago. So then they said the same thing, like, you know, where they came from is nothing like, you know, how it is here. So it's just, it's just an office that's harder than most. And, you know, with the whole transfer thing, I don't, I don't know how the transfer rules work. So if someone can like kind of clear that up better for me in the comments, if you watched up to this point, but I know even if they take a transfer or have to take a transfer before I'm converted, like my spot is still there, but it might like set me back like a month or two. Cause like we recently just had a route, well, routes vacant now. So that just went vacant due to a promotion. So you know, that the number one CC on the list is going to get that in like a month or a month and a half or however long it is. And then, you know, between the other retirees and even if they take a transfer, my spot is still there, thankfully. I, but I hope they don't take a tran or can take a transfer before I'm converted just because, you know, it'll set me back like a month. And it's just like, oh, I want that month. Like, I don't want to be a CC for that extra month. But it's like, whatever, it'll be what it is. But yeah, I mean, Going back to, you know, being good too fast, you know, I'm not sitting here saying, you know, purposely be slower, you know, slack or be lackadaisical. I'm just saying try to float under the radar. I know I'm jumping everywhere, but I'm just thinking of things and just saying them. But try to kind of stay under the radar somewhat. Don't be go out there and just, and like I said, I didn't try to go out there and just kind of, own it you know or be good so fast i know i sound cocky right now but i'm just being honest but you know it just kind of happened i you know i just was able to pick things you know i've always been someone who can kind of just like you know back to playing sports i could kind of pick up sports and you know at least be adequate at them pretty soon you know fairly quickly so it's just kind of like that it's just how you know how i am i guess it's just whatever natural ability whatever you know who knows but yeah, I mean, things are still going good and <clears throat> I like the job. I can see how things will get a lot better once I'm regular because like I said, I can, you know, unless they're forcing overtime because of whatever, you know, it's like I can do my route and go home. And the thing is like with a, one of the routes, I'm probably going to get stuck on at least for some amount of period of time is uh, it's one of those routes that's just screwed up and it's too long. Like no matter what you do, you it's not possible to get done in eight hours. And I wouldn't necessarily mind having that route because it's a way to be on work assignment and still get overtime, you know, without having to do throw offs or, you know, helping. And it's, I don't have a problem with helping other people at all. Like I don't mind that at all. I'm just saying, you know, when I'm a regular, I just kind of want to do my route and go home. So if I'm on a route as a regular that's too long and can't be done in eight hours, it's just a way for me to get some overtime because, you know, I'm making quite a bit of money right now as a CCA. You know, when I'm working, even back before Christmas, I was, I think I've said this a lot in other videos, you know, I was working over 60 hours a week, you know, fairly frequently. And there were, uh, in December, like the first two weeks when things were really crazy because of Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all that kind of thing. And before all the students left, I had back to back 75 hour weeks. So, you know, that was some really good money. And it's like, well, once you make regular, if you're only working, you know, you go from working 70 hours or even 60 hours to 40 hours, you know, that's a pretty big pay cut. Like 
granted, I'll at least have my life back to it, you know, and be able to enjoy things, you know, instead of just work, 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 work and collect a paycheck, which, you know, the money's nice. I, I will never complain about the pay, but it'll at least be nice once I'm regular to just kind of be able to do things again. And I've kind of gotten a little taste of it lately because after Christmas, things just dropped like crazy. Like the last five, I think Christmas was like five, six days ago, but Every day after Christmas has been like a breeze. We've had like no mail, no packages. So people are getting their routes done early as heck, you know, help out others. Everyone's helping others out. There's been a few days, you know, this past week where everyone was clocked out of the office at 3.30, which is just kind of unheard of for my office because we're like one of those offices who's notorious for being out some of the out the latest in the district. You know what I mean? Like we you know, we're, we were regular, regularly after seven, like quite frequently out on the street. So it's like to have everyone clocked out by three thirty was just kind of like mind blowing. It's like, I was kind of felt like I was like in the twilight zone or something. So I'm sure things will pick back up fairly soon here when the students come back and just in general, but who knows, maybe, you know, maybe I've seen like the hardest of the hard that it's going to be. And everything from here out won't be so bad, if that makes sense. But either way, you know, this video is over 20 minutes now. So I'm going to wrap things up. I think I pretty much got everything in I've wanted to. Uh, if you've gotten, if you've stuck with me this long listening, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for watching me ramble and kind of vent. I know I've jump from topic to topic sometimes just because I'm, you know, just thinking off the top of my head and just going for it. But thanks for watching. If you're a CCA right now, just keep powering through, keep trucking along, you know, just try to keep your head down, do your job and go home kind of thing, you know, but if you have any questions or anything, just let me know and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. See ya.